Base Neo is a well-defined format with two main features, the first being baby Pokemon being everywhere, especially Cleffa, and the other being an abundance of trainers because of the hand refreshing quality of Cleffa, you could run 30 or more trainers in your deck. So it stands to reason that if you wanted to construct an anti-meta deck, that you would target these two properties. And it just so happens that this format has hard counters to both of those, so let's just smash them together. Because of its scare Pokemon power, as long as Dark for Alligator is your active Pokemon, your opponent cannot attack with their baby Pokemon, and any Pokemon power on a baby Pokemon stops working. So all of your opponent's baby Pokemon pretty much become useless. The only thing they're really useful for is tanking some hits since the baby effect does still stay on the card. So once you do have a Dark for Alligator in the active position, you have effectively locked your opponent out of using their baby Pokemon. In getting your Dark for Alligator set up, you want to expend all of the trainers you have in this deck to also set up Dark Vile Plume on the bench, which is going to lock your opponent out of using any trainers whatsoever. This means that your opponent is not going to be able to refresh their hand at all once this card is played down. They're not going to be able to gust out these Dark Vile Plumes to knock them out. They're not going to be able to replace your Stadium card with Dark Vile Plume and Dark for Alligator's effects combined. With your typical base Neo build, about 70% of your opponent's deck is going to be unusable. So what exactly is the rest of the build? Well, let's take a gander. Still using Cleffa for setup because this deck success is predicated on getting two stage two cards set up, one in the active and one on the bench. So a full place of Cleffa is going to allow you to start the game with one to really get those hand refreshes going and to fill up your bench with Oddishes and Totodiles. That way you can really set up multiple of each Pokemon. That way if your opponent does find a way to get rid of one of them before your setup is complete, that you've still got backups. Going with that great Rockets Oddish with the 50 HP, still don't know how they got by with that. It's a really great Oddish card. And then also three copies of Dark Gloom. That Pollen Stinch ability is actually really helpful. So if you've got maybe at this point in the game, a Dark Croconaw as your active, and you play a Dark Gloom onto your bench, you're safe to go ahead and use Pollen Stench to try to put a special condition on your opponent's active. If you put it on the Croconaw, that's fine. Ideally, you're going to be evolving it next turn anyway and getting rid of that special condition. It just adds another little layer of disruption that you can add to the game a little earlier before you even have your setup, and get that Dark Vile Plume, of course, which is going to stop all trainer use, like I said in the intro, you want to use all the trainers in this deck before you get your Dark Vile Plume out there. With your hand refreshes, you're going to get most of them anyway, most of the useful ones, and go ahead and play them. For the Totodiles in this deck, I'm going with the 50 HP ones. Just that extra little HP, the survivability helps a lot more since you're not really going to be attacking with a Totodile anyway. So I'll be running three Totodile and also three Dark Croconaw. Clamping Jaw is actually a pretty decent attack. Try to hold your opponent's Pokemon in position and also try to make it so they can't really attack you next turn, but you're not going to be using it that often. Like I said, it's a much better strategy, in my opinion, to just use Dark Gloom from the bench to try to play special conditions, but if you do need to use Clamping Jaw on Dark Croconaw, that's definitely an option too, since you'll be laying those energy on the evolution cards as you play them to try to get up to three. That way, you can go ahead and start using Crushing Blow the turn you evolve into Dark for Alligator. Not only is 50 damage for 3 energy pretty good, but you also have the chance to discard an energy off of your opponent's active, adding to that level of disruption and frustration for your opponent. Because both you and your opponent are going to be locked from using trainers as soon as Dark Vile Plume is laid down, last is essential to this deck. You want to make sure your opponent isn't playing all of their trainers very early on, so what you're going to do is use the classic combo. You're going to play every trainer from your hand as quickly as possible, and then use last before you attack at the end of your turn to make sure that your opponent is shuffling all of theirs back into their deck, hopefully stalling their setup a little bit so that you can get the jump on them. And one of those speedy trainers you're going to be using is the boss's way. It's really going to help you search out those dark glooms, dark vile plumes, dark croconaws, dark for alligators, and get your setup really quick. If you get one hand refresh, you're going to get at least one of these bosses way, and that's going to give you one evolution card that's going to assist in your setup. Computer search is going to do the exact same thing. It's going to give you the exact cards you need in that moment 
Discarding cards from your hand isn't that big of a deal. You can discard other trainers since you do already know you're going to be locked out of them anyway. You want to burn through your deck as quickly as possible anyway because the game is really going to slow down once Dark Vile Plume is out there anyway. You're not going to be playing Professor Oaks after Dark Vile Plume. So go ahead and burn those really early game. Dig through your deck as fast as possible to get the Dark Fur Alligator and the Dark Vile Plume set up. Pokemon Breeder is going to be another great assistance with that as it's going to let you go straight from basic to stage two and possibly get that set up on turn two if you get the right hands. And since you are going to be burning those trainers as quickly as possible, you might as well include a full playset of energy removal. No card is better than stalling your opponent's setup. At the most, they're going to have a recycle energy on a Cleffa maybe. So you can just start targeting everything they have on their bench because... As soon as Dark for Alligator is active, that Clef is not going to be able to use Eek anymore anyway. War Point is included as a measure against the hardest counter to this deck, which is Fossil Muck. So if you see your opponent play down a Grimer and you know what's coming, try to Warp Point that thing into the active position as fast as possible and start attacking it. That way the Muck might be a little easier to knock out. Or if you could knock out the Grimer before it even turns into a Muck, that would be great too. Rockets Hideout as your go-to stadium in this deck. It's going to add 20 HP to all of your dark Pokemon. So even as early as having a Dark Gloom and a Dark Croconaw active, it's going to make it so that they're out of that one-shot range. And it's really going to make it so that Dark for Alligator might actually be put into a three-hit range. Depending on which deck you're up against, of course. I mean, even a Sneasel could one-hit a 100 HP Pokemon, but it's not too common of occurrence. The rest of this deck is going to be filled out with 15 water energy, no special energy in this deck, and enough room left over from your lack of trainers that you're never going to really be energy screwed. You'll have it readily available. Energy removals from your opponent's side can be problematic early game. It's going to keep you from getting that crushing blow on turn three, but that's okay because your setup is really focused on just getting those stage two evolutions out onto the field. And then you can worry about just getting the energy per turn down on Dark for Alligator and not worry about them getting discarded with your opponent's energy removals. The setup for this deck is a bit risky because there are no item finders. There are no nightly garbage runs, so there's not really a way to recycle the deck. And you are burning through it pretty quick, very early game to get your setup. But like I said, as soon as you do have your setup, you're only going to be drawing one card per turn, and the game does slow down quite a bit. As I mentioned earlier, Muck can be a big problem for this deck, but I found in playtesting that it was pretty easy to go ahead and deal with those Grimers fast enough that I didn't have to worry too much about the Muck. Decks that utilize the card typically only run a 2-2 line of Muck, so if you could knock out one Grimer, you've really reduced the chances that you're going to have to deal with another Muck during the game. And even if you are able to pull out a muck into the active position using Warp Point, it's pretty much going to be stuck there long enough for you to knock it out with Crushing Blow, and it's really not going to be able to attack you. Most muck decks didn't even run Grass Energy. But at the same time, if your opponent is smart, if they're sneaky, and they wait until late game to lay down a Grimer that they're going to evolve into a muck on the next turn, you're not going to be able to Warp Point into it at that point because Dark Vile Plume will already be active. And at that point, that late in the game, your opponent's probably going to have 15 trainers in their hand that they've been dying to play. So as soon as that muck goes down, so are all the trainers in their hand. And that can put you in a really prickly situation. The real annoyance for this deck is Fossil Air Dactyl because as soon as it hits the bench, you're not going to be able to get the rest of your setup at all. And your Totodiles and your Oddishes are going to be vulnerable. Unlike Muck, Aerodactyl can hit the, your opponent's bench on turn one thanks to the addition of Fossil Egg, meaning that you don't have time to try to knock out a mysterious fossil. It's the Aerodactyl's down and you have to deal with it. You can still use Warp Point to pull it into the active and attack it, but even if you have a fully set up Dark for Alligator, it's going to be just out of range from a knockout from a crushing blow. So it is a real shame running into Sneasel Dactyl decks because this deck actually handles Sneasel and Chansey fairly well because early on you deny them their special energy cards and once Dark Vile Plume is set up you make it very difficult for them to recycle or even search out those special energy cards that make those decks so good. 
especially in the case of Chansey. If you're using Crushing Blow to discard double colorless energies and metal energies, then Chansey will be self-destructing because Double Edge is going to be shy of knocking out a Dark Fur Alligator with Rocket's Hideout active. So if it is able to attack, it's going to be dealing full damage back to itself without those metal energies. Also keep in mind that late in the metagame, fire types like Typhlosion and Blaine's Charizard came into prominence a lot more, especially Blaine's Charizard for its ability to snipe babies on the bench, but Blaine's Charizard is an Oko from a Dark Feraligator, which just an extra thing to keep in mind when considering the viability of this deck. Let me know what you think about this deck down in the comments. Let me know what decks you want to see. Are there any base Neo decks that I haven't covered yet? I'm getting near the end of my list before I get into the request deck, so if you have request decks, send those too. Find me on Instagram at DrunkShuckle. So I will see you next video. Until then, have a wonderful life.